Hi, my name is Dan Clark, and I just want to thank you again for coming to this YouTube channel and learning the many things that I've been sharing about the witnesses and the organization and the things that they really don't want you to know. And I just wanted to pause for a minute and I wanted to say to anybody out there, if there's anyone out there that's hurting because of the Jehovah's Witnesses, that's feeling empty, they're starting to see through this veil of untruth, they're starting to come out of denial. That's what I call it. Uh, I notice most people deny reality. They just make excuses for the organization and they continue to go along. But there comes a certain point in people's lives, I believe, where we're ready to come out of denial. We're ready to come out and say, this is not the truth. And you're ready to take that walk into the abyss. You know, I just want to say that I know it's scary. Um, I know that you lose your holy infrastructure. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses for me was like everything. It was the table with the legs. It was, it was my whole life. Um, I was in it for 40 years. I knew people along the Front Range of Colorado for, uh, for 20 some years. And uh, they were gone just like that. Um, when I turned in my letter and I left, uh, people that I've eaten with for 10 years walked by me in the store like they never knew me. So you are cut off uh, completely from the organization should you leave like I did. I just wrote my letter and left because I wanted to do it integral wise and I didn't want to lie and tell people I just fell away and I'm not going to meetings anymore. I just wanted a straight cut which may be a little difficult for most people because uh, it is kind of going off into the abyss and you should have some friends, some well-meaning friends or aunts or, or relatives or cousins or something or some friends at work that you can lean on because you're going to need them. You're losing a huge infrastructure. You're losing uh, an organization of people that you might know hundreds and uh, they're gone in that instant, the day you leave. But it's almost like you have a choice. You can to thine own self be true and come out of denial or you can stay in denial and live in this compartmentalized life with these dysfunctional people. And uh, I just chose a clean cut. And What I found out was on the other side of the fear, when I left it was, it was fearful. It was like a desert I was going into and I, I didn't know where I was going. But the amazing thing that I realized after a while was that it was the same for the Israelites always on the other side of what they feared was the promised land, was the land flowing with milk and honey. And uh, that's the way it was for me. When I left, it looked like I was going into an abyss, but really, when I closed that door with the witnesses, all these other doors opened. The world now seemed friendly to me, and it was friendly. And many of the people in the world are loving and are very loving and good Christian people and good Buddhist people and good Hindu people and it, it all became good for me and you know it was my promised land I found that the, the teachings of Jesus were just as true today as they were when he said them he says I've come so that you could have life and have life in abundance that's not talking about waiting for a world to end it's talking about being here and letting your light shine the world needs your and my light today, right now. It's why God made us. God said, I made you in my image and likeness. We were a divine idea in the mind of God before we came to earth. And Jesus said, let your light shine for all to see. Not the watchtower, your light. Your light that God born in you. In fact, I don't know how we can be reborn unless we get rid of that ideology. And that's another thing that I'll say that the witnesses and, and, and the, the thinkingness and the structure is an ideology. And you can actually take that ideology and you can set it aside. That's what I did. I just stripped off those teachings programmed into me since birth and I said, I'm gonna find God and, and find God for myself. And that's what happened to me when I was getting this divine frustration, I call it, about the Watchtower organization. I started tuning into that and listening to that, and it led me out of there. And then there's two tools for breaking fear's vice grip. How I called upon courage and, 
and courage came to me and gave me the courage to walk away. It was the most wonderful experience and I truly do feel I've been reborn and, 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 and God has been reborn in me and it's been a wonderful experience and since I've left, you know what, I've built a company, um, financially independent, um, I've, I've painted, I, I never had a painting lesson in my life, it was just a gift right from the Spirit. Uh, after a prayer that I had, uh, this prayer and this surrendered state that I got into. and Anyway, I just want to tell you that outside, where it looks like a desert, is really freedom and peace and liberation that you've never experienced. And it's just so wonderful. It's a journey that, that you'll just be glad you took. And I can tell you, just on the other side of what you fear the most, you remember when the Israelites were freed from Egypt? and they had to go off into the desert. Well, it was like a paradise there. God was feeding them and watering them. And then they got to the, you know, the Red Sea and then it parted. And then again, they had that peace and joy. And then they got to the big wall where the land was flowing with milk and honey. And what'd they say? Oh, there's giants over there. We can't go in there, they're too big. But where was the milk and honey? It was right beyond what they feared the most. And you're gonna find out that's the case for you too right beyond what you fear the most, which might be leaving that organization and uh, walking through the fear, feeling the fear and walking anyway, and uh, to experience your promised land. I assure you, your promised land is waiting. I know it's waiting. Mine is waiting. In just a, a little time, I found the wife of my dreams. I stumbled around a little bit when I got out there, made a few mistakes, but it's been an amazing journey. And, I've had a prosperity, abundance, peace, wholeness, and contentment beyond my wildest dreams. And I think the main thing that I feel that I, I love the most is that I can think. I think for myself, I've learned to think again. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses take away your ability to think after a while because they do your thinking for you. The Watchtower does your thinking for you. That's why five million people can totally overlook a prophecy that was told that was going to happen on that day or on that year or around that time and it passed by years and continue to still follow because they're fully indoctrinated they don't use their own thinking and you know what there's nothing greater than thinking for yourself and there's nothing better than living from that God within and having that connectivity in that direction and you have that and you'll have that if you walk from that organization so I just wish you the best and I just want to tell you and just that's what I want to encourage you. I left and since I've, I've been an author, I've had so many blessings, I can't even count them. It's been amazing living the home that I want to live in. I have the life that I want to live, wonderful children that I've gotten out of that organization um, that are totally free and liberated. They're the most beautiful, loving kids. They just operate with that God love flowing right through them, right to everyone they meet. They're not judgmental, they're not walking around saying we're right and everybody's wrong. Almost everybody that sees my kids says they're some of the most beautiful kids they've ever seen. And I don't say that just as a parent, other people say that. They say, wow, those kids are different because they're liberated, they're free, they think for themselves. They're not weighed down by religious negative ideology and shame. Jehovah only wants your best. That's it. You know, they don't have all that. They don't live without Christmas and birthdays. And, you know, they have all those things. They're celebrated. Their life is worth celebrating. You know, they're wonderful people. And you're wonderful people. And when you get out into the world, you'll see that a lot of people in the world are wonderful people. And that they love you. And they care for you. More than you'll ever know. So I just want to share that with you. And I just wanted to take a moment from my uncovering things that the Watchtower uh, doesn't want you to know and just encourage anybody who's feeling that. If you want to talk to me, I'm available. Um, you can contact me on my website. I'd love to help you and encourage you in any way that you have. You might even have some hooks in you, some things that are kind of still hanging in there that you need to take a look at. You need to pull up and take a look at and dissect. Put a big light on them, no matter what it is, like the blood thing. Put a big light on it. Let's look at this really close. So you can get that hook out of you and be totally free. It's wonderful to be totally free. So anyway, that's it for now, and I just want to thank you.